Hello and welcome to my channel. If you've been here before, welcome back. My name is Alfonso Peluso and I'm a studio associate professor in the College of Architecture at IIT, the home of the legendary Mies van der Rohe, and I'm adjunct faculty at Columbia College Chicago in the Interior Architecture program. Shout out to all my students. I hope everyone is doing well today. I'm doing great. Looks like we're just about to get a little winter storm here in Chicago so some some snow is on its way wherever you guys are at I hope the weather is just the way you want it <laughs> so today we're gonna look at a plugin for grasshopper called parakeet and the things we're gonna do with parakeet we're gonna look at some pattern generation and map to surface we're gonna look at growth on BREP we're gonna look at flow path and I think that's what we're looking at on the left here. That's coming from our flow path capsule. And we're going to look at venation patterns, so uh, the way that trees and leaves grow. And as a bonus, we have to look at populate geometry and point in BREP. Before we jump into today's tutorial, if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, please click the red subscribe and click the bell to receive all of the notifications. I really appreciate that. We're on our way to 8,000 subscribers, so I'm hoping to get there soon. There is something for everybody in any software that you're using today. You'll find a tutorial on my YouTube page for it. Also, if you haven't connected with me on Instagram, please go ahead and do that at my first name, Alfonso, underscore my last name, Peluso posting a lot of work of what my students uh, are producing and it's gotten a lot of good feedback and I'm really cool I, I, I feel honored to be able to share my students work so I like to do that alright so the plugin if you go to Food for Rhino and you search parakeet parakeet will be the only plugin that will show up there and you have to be logged in and you would download the latest version of the plugin. Now what we're doing today reminds me a lot of the architect Neri Oxman. Uh, her work her work is very organic. It's very um, it mimics things that are found in nature and I've, I've always been fascinated by her work so this parakeet plugin reminds me of something that um, you know we could this looks like something that we could make in parakeet when we get to our growth on BREP it's something very similar to this alright let's jump into the tutorial let me just clean this out okay so we're just going to start with making ourselves a surface that we can apply these tools to. So I'm going to do this with an ellipse. So I'll make my first ellipse and I'm going to make its radius 8 and 6. Okay. Let's see where that's let's see where it's at. Oh, I have my I have the half green, half white paint bucket on in the upper right, which I like using. It only shows me the selected capsule, so it wasn't showing me the ellipse. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna drag it down and then hold my alt key. Or else you could copy and paste. Okay, I'm going to make this 7 and 5. And I'm going to raise it up in the Z height. I'm going to raise it up 4. Okay, and then I'm going to loft between the two ellipses. Okay, there you go. 
now we have a surface to work with. And it's important to point out that this is a single surface. So it's an untrimmed, untrimmed uh, surface. So that's what we're working with. Those are, are nice to work with. Uh, we'll work with a mesh a little bit later on today, but so far we're mainly working with surfaces. All right, perfect. Okay, so pattern generation, map to surface. So in the plugin Parakeet, it has these two major tabs, and those are tiling and pattern generation. Okay, pattern generation. If I if I bring out one of these pattern gen general type A. I don't I don't see anything happening on the in the Rhino window. It needs something. It it's always going to need some sort of tiling first. So I can't just go to pattern generation and have these patterns show up. They need they need to know what to be hosted to or what to be mapped onto or what tessellation pattern to follow. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So from tiling I can pick one of the tiles um, that already exists in in Parakeet, or I can pick some tiles that are in Grasshopper. So let's do that. If I go to if I go to Vector and I go to Grid, here are some grids that come with Grasshopper, not part of Parakeet, but they still work. And just to keep it simple for now, I'm going to choose a square. Okay, so now you can see that square grid. Okay, I'm not going to play around with the size or the X and Y on that. I'm just going to keep it as is. Okay. Now, what Parakeet has is it has a tool under Curve, Mirrored Subdivide Quad. I found that this is really helpful for getting good tessellations. Okay, so what it's going to do, it's going to take that quadrant and it's going to break it down into, or it's going to subdivide it into four. And it's going to rotate the points for each one of those. So we'll see that, and it creates a nice tessellation. So I'll go ahead and plug that in. So you see the difference there when I unplug it. Watch on the left. That's how it was. This is how it is. Okay, and it has a mirror input as well. I'd use a Boolean toggle true false if I wanted to mirror it. Okay, so now I have um, some tiling. Okay, I have some I have some geometry which are in the end they're just polylines. So I can apply those to any pattern genotype that I would want. I'm going to choose, for really no good reason, I'm going to choose H. Plug that in. Okay, now there's a factor input. That's 0.5 right now. So I'm going to type 0.5 just to see the difference here. So here's here's one, just a diagrid. And then you get some tessellations in between. Okay, so find something I like. That looks pretty good. So you can make beautiful 2D tessellations. And it's really that simple for all of the pattern generations that are here you can start first with some sort of tiling and then you can add a pattern generation to it okay that's the 2d stuff I'm I'm really more interested in using parakeet uh, as a three-dimensional tool to make three-dimensional geometry something that I could eventually 3d print um, so it's always a little bit tricky okay so let's uh, keep this nice and neat here. Okay. All right, 
right, so this is this is where my loft is. I add a scribble here. And then I'll add a scribble here. This is where we did our well, we haven't finished it yet, but we're working on a map to surface. Okay, so we wanna we wanna project those two dimensional tessellations onto our three dimensional loft. Okay, so I'm gonna use map the surface. And it's part of parakeet. So you would find it there under the pattern generation. Oh no, I'm sorry, under parakeet and then under surface. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and plug in my curves. And then it says a source surface. So my source surface is my, I don't have a source surface surface yet. I have a target surface. But my sur source surface is going to come from the rectangular grid. So I'm going to go ahead and type planar, planar surf. It's actually in Grasshopper, it's actually called boundary surfaces. Okay. Okay, so those are going to be my source surfaces. My target surface is going to be the loft. Sorry about crossing behind all that. And then this has a U and V subdivision as well. So I could say that this is say four maybe a little less. Okay. Looks pretty good, right? Mapping it to the surface. Okay, I want to introduce you also to a uh, a component called flatten. Actually, not flatten, but fatten. <laughs> not flatten, fatten. Okay, so if we look under, if we look under uh, the mesh primitives. I have a capsule called flat fatten. Okay, so I could take 2D geometry instead of using pipe or another method. There's pipe, there's perp frames. You can try out fatten. And you could search the web. Let's see if I can find it for us. So this is fatten for grasshopper. Let's see if it's at the top of this. Yeah. Okay, so I searched fatten for grasshopper. It got me to a forum page and I went to the very top of that forum page and I found fattener.gha you can just drag and drop that onto Rhino's canvas or Grasshopper's canvas, I should say. Okay, so the thickness of this, I'm going to make it 0.07. Alright, so there we have some three dimensional lines. All right, we can turn all of this off.
Okay, so next is our growth on BREP. All right, so let's look at that. Okay, so from parakeet. under pattern generation we have a growth on BREP. There's also a growth on mesh but we're going to choose growth on BREP. Okay our BREP is this lofted surface so since I'm going to keep using that uh, instead of dragging a wire all the way down I can just type in surface and plug that into the surface container and plug this into the BREP okay so we have some inputs on this side we have the distance we have the mode we have the mini uh, sorry the minimum point count the maximum point count and then we have a reset so in order for this to work, I need a timer that shows me how this is growing on the BREP. So if I double click and I type in timer, I'm going to plug that in. Okay, and I'm going to set this timer. I'm going to right click on it and set it to intervals of every 20 milliseconds. So every 12, 20 milliseconds, it's going to show me uh, a refresh of what it's actually doing in Rhino. Okay, so to see anything, I need a reset button as well. So I'm double click and type in button. And plug that into reset. Go ahead and reset it. And now it's growing. So you can see that growing here. So this is what this is another thing with, that remind me of Neri Oxman, uh, this growth on BREP. Now, I, you know, I mentioned the distance. You you could make that smaller. Um, the mode you could work with um, different different mode types. Of how it defines the initial polyline. So you can play around with all these inputs and see see how it affects the growth on the BREP. All right, let's keep let's keep going. Um, now I will say that I found Parakeet to be pretty heavy on the computer and to to use up a lot of the computer's resources. So I'm playing it cool right now by keeping everything pretty light. You know, if I wasn't doing a video tutorial, I would go in here and you know try to make these much more close closer together. Um, but I don't want to sacrifice it for the computer uh, could crash. All right, so growth on BREP. Next. Next, we have flow path. All right, let's look at flow path. Right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. One thing I didn't do, which you know, it'll it'll make it a little bit more heavy, but I didn't I didn't use the fatten.
Okay, you can see that a little bit better now. All right, I'm going to turn all this off. Okay, flow path. So that also is under pattern generation. If I go down to flow path. Okay, so this is our first time where it's looking for a mesh as input. Uh, I try to stay away from meshes in the beginning here. Of course, I work with meshes all the time. I'm not, uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to give a bad rep for meshes, but I wanted to see how much we can do with just surfaces, how much pattern generation we could do with only surfaces before we had to switch over to mesh. Okay, so right now I can make another one of these containers. Bring that down. Okay. So I'm going to convert that to a mesh. I'm going to use mesh B rep. Okay, so there's some, they're hard to see but there's some vertical lines in here. If you're not seeing the mesh lines, you have to go up to display in Grasshopper, go up to display and choose preview mesh edges or control M is the shortcut. Okay. All right, so that's our, our mesh. Now what it's looking for for this flow path is looking for some start points. And for those start points, we're going to use, I consider it a point cloud, um, but it's actually, if I go under vector grid, it's called populate geometry. Okay, so that's going to be our mesh. We're going to plug the mesh into it. And you see it's populating the geometry with points. Now, what's important here is I can control uh, the number of points with the count. So if I want it to be more tessellations and everything really tighter together in the pattern, I can increase the, the count for population. All right, so those are going to be my start points. All right, so let's let's uh, let's go ahead and hide this. And for this flow path, I'm going to host um, a polygon. every one of those points. I'm going to make its radius 0 0.07 and then I'm going to loft between them. Alright, the computer is going to want to think about it. Okay, so you see this is what uh, I had shown as a teaser in the beginning of the tutorial. So there's the growth. Now one thing we can do with this growth, let me bring Grasshopper back up. As And that's, I don't know why that capsule is red, but it's, it's working. Okay, so a couple things here. Let me turn off the original stuff. Oh, it's a good idea to save at home if you haven't saved. Now's the time. Okay.
Okay, so there's a flow direction. It's uh, a Boolean toggle, so I can double click and type in Boolean toggle. Okay, it's thinking about it. Okay, now it's coming down, that flow is coming down from the very top. Okay, let me go ahead and move this over. Go ahead and hide this. Okay, let's look at our last category here, this venation pattern, venation pattern one and two. So let's look at that. So here's one and there's two. So let's start with one. Okay. So the venation points are going to be in, it's going to be a point cloud again, or what's called the populate 3D. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy and paste this. Just unplugging that. Okay, so I'm going to plug that in. Okay, it's looking for the root, the root indices. Okay, so we're going to do that. We're going to use points that are, that are at the very bottom of this. Okay, so let's get our surface down here. Plug that in. Unhide that. You can tell this really slowed me down. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flow path. This might help. I'm going to right click and disable it. Unhide these. Okay. So I'm going to say, I'm going to make the root indices uh, where this is going to grow from. I'm going to choose the, the ones that are at the very bottom of the, of the lofted surface there. Okay. So I'm going to do that by, I'm going to make uh, a bounding box that those points are included in. So I'm going to make that bounding box just a simple one in Rhino. So I'm just going to type in the command box. I'm just going to make a big box here. And I'm going to look in a front view, and I'm just going to lower that box down. Turn my grid snap off for a second. I'm just going to use those points. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to use capsule called point in B rep. Okay, so point in B rep. 
or point yeah point and B rep this one okay the B rep is going to be that box that I just drew so I have to bring that in okay All right, so that's the B rep. The list of points to solve for are the are the populate 3D points or populate geometry. And see if to see if those are the ones. Let's I'm going to hide this. I'm going to hide this one too. All right, not quite there yet. All right, so I'm going to need this is true false values coming out of the point in B rep. So I'm going to need a call pattern. Okay, that's that's the call pattern, the trues and falses, true true, false false and so on. That's the pattern. So that's going in here. And then the list of points that we're using to cull, which means remove, the list of points we're using to remove is coming from the populate geometry. Okay, so now you see it's only those points that showed up inside that B rep, that box that I drew. So those are going to be the root indices. Okay, then there is a there's a branch count that's set to three by default. There's a cutoff distance that's set to one, and then there's how many iterations of this. So all those values you can experiment with. Now, let's get it to show up. So let's change our. I'm just being cautious. I'm saving. Let's change our seed count from under seed count, but our count change our count to change it to 500 okay and what I'm going to do is hide I'm going to hide all this and just see the venation pattern there we go so you get this really beautiful, organic, uh, tree-like pattern. And again, you could fatten this. You could use pipe. You could use perp frames um, to get some sort of three-dimensional geometry. All right. So that was Venation 1. So now we're on to our last one, which is going to be Venation 2. So I'm going to turn this off. All right. So doing some similar things that we've done before. This time we're going to work with a mesh. If I go to this pattern generation here in Parakeet and I go down to Venation 2, you're going to see that it wants points. It wants a base mesh this time. It also wants the root points and there's a cutoff distance and a step size okay so I'm gonna go ahead and 
copy surface going to add a populate geometry Okay, so these are going to be our points. Our mesh, have to convert this into a mesh. So I'm going to use a simple one for now called BREP. It's called Mesh BREP. Okay, and I'll plug that into the base mesh. Okay, so now we'll need the root points. Now, I wonder if I can use the one from above because we've already we've already done that. We've already made this. We've turned this into our root points. So, let's see if it allows us to do that. Yeah, now it's something's something's growing on there. So, let's let's take this Shift Control I. Shift Control I selects everything else. And right click, preview off. All right. So let's increase before I mess around with any of those inputs. Let's increase the count of the points, the number of points. Okay. I'd like to get more, a little bit more leaf-like structure on there if I can. Okay, cutoff distance is point 0.2. Okay, it's a pretty low number. What if I type in 0.5? This is a number slider from 0 to 1. Okay, so it wants lower values. So I need more. That's 0. So what if I put in 0, 0, 1? one. So that's one. Let's get the number slider correct first. Okay, let's look at the step size. Step size by default is set to point 0.2. So let's do what I did before where I did 0 less than 1. It's thinking. The 0, that's going to throw it off. Putting a 0 in for the step size, that's my fault. I should know better than that. <laughs> That's going to make it sit and spin there for a while. Well, there you go, the white screen of the white screen of death and grasshopper. It will come back, but it's going to take a little while. And I'm glad we were at the very end of end of our tutorial today so if you're just getting your semester started I hope that's going well I've just gotten mine started and it's going pretty good so I'm happy for that if you like this video please go ahead and you'll see my head is gonna pop up in the upper left you'll click on my head and I'm gonna put some links to some other videos uh, in the upper right 
why don't I try putting a link to uh, what's a, what's a good one in relationship to what we're doing? Lunchbox. I'll put a link to Lunchbox, and I'm not sure what I'll put in the lower right. All right. Thanks for watching. I will see you next time.